By now, I'm sure you've seen the absolute meme that is Boycott Wayland, which has a couple of reasonable points here and there, but a lot of it is just blatantly wrong and completely out of date, and even complains that some X configuration tools don't work on Wayland. Like, what would you expect? Now, on the other side, there are plenty of articles out there arguing for the technical merits of Wayland. For example, this recent one by Oro, and I've made plenty of videos on the topic myself. But what I had never really stopped to consider is that none of this really matters anymore. So a bunch of people have been sending me this article by Chris Siebenman. The technical merits of Wayland are mostly irrelevant. When I first read that title, I wasn't really sure where it was going to go, but some really interesting arguments do get made. I don't particularly disagree with Wayland's general technical merits and improvements, but at this point, I think they are mostly irrelevant. As such, I don't think that talking about them will do much to shift more people to Wayland. I say that the technical merits are irrelevant because I don't believe that they're a major factor anymore in most people moving or not moving to Wayland. At this point in time and from my vantage point, there are roughly four groups of people still in the X camp. From my experience, from my comment section, I will always run to these people that no matter what you say about Wayland, no matter how much of a better experience it is going to be for the regular person, they just have no interest in using Wayland. They have their experience on X, and it doesn't matter what you say, that's the experience they're going to be using. So, people on Unix environments that don't have Wayland support, they have to use X or not have a graphical experience. Suggesting that these people change to a Linux environment with Wayland support is a non-starter. They are presumably using their current environment for good reasons. A great example of this is the BSDs. Now, FreeBSD does have Wayland support, but if you're a NetBSD user or currently an OpenBSD user, that is being worked on, but right now, those only support X. Or say you have a Unix server like IBM AIX, HP UX, Oracle Solaris, which are still things that do exist in the world and are still being sold. You're going to be using X. Or so you have this box, it has one function, it sits in a closet somewhere or controls some random machinery and was last updated 20 years ago. That probably doesn't support Wayland either. All of these are situations where no matter what you say about Wayland being great, it doesn't matter. If you're using a system like this, you have a good reason to be doing so. But these aren't the only people. There are people using mainstream desktop environments that already support Wayland, primarily GNOME and KDE, in relatively stock ways. Now there are other examples and things are being worked on, like Budgie very shortly is going to be Wayland default or Wayland only, but the list is still very, very short. Switching to Wayland is generally transparent for these people and happens when their Linux distribution decides to change the default for their hardware. If their Linux distribution has not switched the default, there is often good reason for it. Most of these people switch over time as the distribution changes defaults and they're unlikely to switch before then. These are the sorts of people that aren't using Linux as a hobby. Linux is a tool for them. They don't care about Linux gaming or racing Linux. They need a Linux environment to get some work done. And that's pretty much it. They don't care about distro politics. Oh, you're using Arch, you're using Manjaro. It doesn't matter. All they need is a system that does the job. I know a game dev like this, he installs Godot, he installs any of the other tools he needs, and that's pretty much as far as it goes. But there are other people in this camp as well. People who are just first starting to get into Linux. They don't really know anything about the tech stack yet. They know that there is this distribution, this distribution, this distribution. They do slightly different things, but why they do different things and how that happens, that's not something they're really concerned with yet. There are also people using desktop environments or custom X setups that don't currently support Wayland. Switching to Wayland is extremely non-transparent for these people because they will have to change their desktop environment, so far to GNOME or KDE, or reconstruct a Wayland version of it. 
back in 2021. This included XFC and Cinnamon, and based on modest internet searches, I believe it still does. From my understanding, it still does. I know XFC is working on it, and Cinnamon, most of their components do support Wayland, minus the window manager part, the kind of most important part. Yes, XFC and Cinnamon are popular, but most desktop environment users are using GNOME and then less so KDE. When we talk about the window manager space, this is where it gets even worse. i3 is a massive window manager, but if you're using pretty much anything else, you're not going to have an experience on Wayland without changing to a completely different environment. Yes. There are things like River, which is inspired by BSPWM. Yes, there is DWL, which calls itself DWM for Wayland. And yes, there are things like LabWC, which are inspired by Openbox. But all of these are different environments from just, hey, I'm on KDE on X, I'm on KDE on Wayland. Yeah, there are some things that are going to be a bit different, but you don't have to go and install anything new. You don't have to go and change any config files, learn a new config format. It's just switch your toggle and you're pretty much good to go. Here, you are rewriting your entire configs. In the window manager space, there are certainly exceptions. You have Sway on Wayland, which is a superset of i3. Obviously, some of the X tools you're using will have to change, but all of the i3 features are supported in Sway. And you have Qtile, which has a Wayland and an X11 version. But these are few and far between. Most of these are either Wayland or X, and if you want to switch, there's going to be a time commitment. And if you're not that attached to the environment, maybe give it a shot. But if you've been using the exact same window manager for three years, and you've been using X for 10 plus years, and have an environment that is perfectly crafted to do exactly what you need it to do, I can see why you don't want to move. One can hope that some of these desktop environments will get Wayland support over time. I have a lot less hope for the window managers. Usually there's like one or two core developers, and most of the major ones have had open issues about Wayland for multiple years, and nobody really wants to work on it. I can understand why it would be a massive undertaking. But if these environments did do so, it would move people using them up into the previous category and probably moving them to Wayland users. However, the primary bottleneck for this is probably time and attention from developers, who by now probably have heard lots about why people think they should add support for Wayland and its technical merits. I can't even imagine how many people have said, hey guys, Add Wayland. Here is why, listing the exact same reasons. Now, as for some of the well known desktop environments, XFCE does have a roadmap. From my understanding, things are supposed to be properly implemented by 4.20. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's certainly what's being talked about. Clem, in regards to Cinnamon, has said, hey, uh, our tools work on it, but like, there's not really any specific plans yet. I've not found any roadmaps, so they're just sort of coasting along doing what they do. Now, over on the Ubuntu Mate page, it says this. Modern display server support. Wayland is set to become the de facto next generation display server. While Xorg has some years of usefulness remaining, now is the time to start planning for how Mate Desktop and therefore Ubuntu Mate implement support for Wayland. So... They want to do it, but like, there's not any specific plans yet. Budgie, on the other hand, has this giant page called Wayland, and at least for now, Budgie 11 is aiming to be Wayland first, but we might see Wayland support sometime during the life cycle of Budgie 10. And then there's LXQT, which I don't know how many people are still using, but they just have Wayland support already and are improving it every single update. Now, the final major group are people who could theoretically switch to Wayland and who might gain benefits from doing so, but who have found good reasons, often related to hardware support, that X worked better for them. The best example being NVIDIA GPUs. You can use an NVIDIA GPU on Wayland, but there are pretty good reasons why you might not want to do so. 
and certain accessibility workflows don't function the way you would expect on Wayland, and in some cases simply don't function, especially if you're operating outside of one of the major desktop environments. There is just more tooling available for doing accessibility on the X side. You may not have been in one of those groups, but that wasn't an exhaustive list. There are smaller groups not included here, such as people who have critical reliance on X features not well supported in Wayland, and I feel like I'm kind of in one of those groups. So I rely on video capture. Now, Pipewire video capture does exist on Wayland, and for the most part, it's fine, but it's not as good as X. So I was previously using the Hyperland desktop, and there were some portal issues happening that were completely locking up my desktop, forcing me to hard reset my system. Now, I don't know if that was a portal issue or a Hyperland issue. What I know is it was certainly an issue. Now, if I went to use Sway instead, none of that happened, but I couldn't capture individual windows. I could only capture my entire desktop. So I simply couldn't do the podcast on Sway. Then there are things like OBS browser docs, which simply do not work on Wayland, and the only way to get them to work is run OBS through X Wayland, which breaks a couple of different extensions. Video production is incredibly niche. Video production on Linux is a niche of a niche. Video production on Linux on Wayland, I don't know, there might be like 10 people doing it. There are people out there like George Stavrakis doing incredible work in this space, but it's certainly not a major focus of most projects, and I totally get it. Like, focus on the things that most normal people are doing, and then eventually we can get around to the more niche problems, or I can help out with those projects and things like that, but it makes sense why it's still rough. With only a slight amount of generalization, none of these people will be moved by Wayland's technical merits. The energetic people who could be persuaded by technical merits to go through switching desktop environments, or in some cases, replacing hardware, or accepting limited features, have mostly moved to Wayland already. The people who remain on X are there either because they don't want to rebuild their desktop environment, they don't want to do without features and performance they currently have, or their Linux distribution doesn't think their desktop should switch to Wayland yet. I think all of that is true, but I think there is a very important point. Don't take anybody else's word about the state of Wayland. If you've not used Wayland ever in your life, or you've not used Wayland in like, you know, three or five years, give it a try now. See what it's like. Maybe it's good enough for you now. Maybe there are still some rough edges, in which case, keep using X. But don't just read a forum post from a couple of years ago saying Wayland bad and think, oh, Wayland's still bad today. There has been some massive work being done over the past couple of years, and things are in such a better state for the regular person they were back then. And whilst the people still using X might be really loud about it, I don't think there are many of them left by now, and if they're out there, they're hard to reach, since the Wayland people have been banging this drum for quite a while now. There is a very good reason why on the Boycott Wayland thread, I was called YouTube's Top Wayland Propagandist. Look, I'll wear that title with absolute pride. Yes, I am a Wayland Propagandist, and you should be too. P.S. The other sense that Wayland's technical merits are mostly irrelevant is that everyone agrees that Wayland is the future of Unix graphics and development of the X server is dead. Unless and until new people show up to revive X server development, Wayland is the only game in town. And when you have a monopoly, your technical merits don't really matter. This is certainly the case for anybody who's actually paying attention. Turns out, there is a lot of people <laughs> that aren't paying attention though. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use Wayland? Do you use X? If you are still using X, why? Like, what about X is still keeping you in that system? Do you just not really care? Or do you have a really good reason for it? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and if you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Wayland is the future, but maybe not the present for some people.